All right, folks. Um, a obviously web assign. There's some benefits to it. Uh, there are also some things that, through the course of uh, using online platforms, that you run into that uh, may seem like they are misguiding you or uh, speaking to the contrary of what we've learned in class. Okay. One of those questions is question number twenty. Um, if you answer it like we did in class, you probably don't even come across this issue. Okay, so uh, the question is 2 cosine squared theta minus 1 equals 0. Okay, now you might not get cosine. I think, they, I think the cosine is red, so you might get sine. Uh, but you approach the same way regardless. So it would be cosine squared theta is equal to 1 half. And then cosine theta is equal to plus or minus radical 2 or 2, and we saw for cosine. And, and all the people I've dealt with, that's not been an issue. And all the people I've dealt with, this has not been an issue. They would write then, uh, you know, that happens at pi over 4. It happens at 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4, right? Those are the four solutions. And when cosine is positive radical 2 or 2, and when it is negative radical 2 or 2. So here it was positive. There it's positive. Those two are where it's negative. Okay. Um, they ask you for the infinite solutions. So if I ask for the infinite solutions, that means this one I'm going to add to it what? From what we talked about in class, I'm going to add 2 pi k. Because that's going to let me go from pi over 4 down into the next period and find the corresponding point in the next period. Does it make sense? Okay. And then the period after that, and the period after that. So this allows me to find the next corresponding point to pi over 4. Then we'll do the same thing here. Do the same thing here. And do the same thing here. And if you were on number 20, and you did all that, and you typed it in correctly, you put commas after each one of these, I think. Uh, hit enter. It gives you full credit. Okay, somebody came up to me yesterday, and they had a typo in there. I think instead of a, a, a comma, they put a period. So it says they were wrong, and it gave them feedback. And the feedback said that the answer was pi over 4 plus pi k and 3 pi over 4 plus pi k. And then they, so they said, okay, well, I don't understand that. And um, because that's, that's to the contrary of what we talked about in class. And then they say, I, go the, I think there's a, there's a watch it clip, okay, some of the embedded videos. So they watched it, and it walks through this and explains, or it, it explains it, but it, it uh, vaguely explains or demonstrates how they got pi over 4 plus pi k and 3 pi over 4 plus pi k. What you find out is that if we were to, I'm just going to graph these real quick, okay? Um, I think I have, I just hit, might take a little bit of time here to get back to what I had earlier. Come on. Anyway. So these vertical lines right here are, that one's found at pi over 4. This is 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. Okay. Now, these are the other solutions down the road, right, into the second period. Well, if I let k go to 1, it finds those in the second period, right? If I let k go to 2, it finds them in the third period. If I go k to be negative 1, it finds them in this period to the left. Okay? So, in the way I've written these vertical lines, I've written them just like this. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, if we look at, and this is where the uh, web assign instruction or feedback differs a little bit. 
Um, if I look at this pi over 4 and compare it to 5 pi over 4, how different are they? How much off are they from one another? Pi. Pi over 4 plus pi gives me 5 pi over 4. So they're saying, why, why write both of these if you can write one of them in terms of the other? I should be able to write 5 pi over 4 in terms of pi over 4. And if I write it like that, then when k is 0, when k is 0, it gives me pi over 4, right? When k is 1, it gives me 5 pi over 4. When k is 2, it's going to give me the next one at 9 pi over 4. Does that make sense, everybody? So that will work, and it will find these um, additional intersections or solutions. How do that one there and that one there relate? They're a difference of pi again, right? So if we say... We're going to start with 3 pi over 4 and add to it pi times k. k is 0, it gives me that one. If k is 1, it gives me that one. If k is 2, it will give me 11 pi over 4, which is after this next one there. Does that make sense? Um, so their argument is that that will work. Okay? I... And it's because it's, I, I think it's most direct. It's the most, I think, maybe logical way of seeing it. And it's the way I, it's the reason I teach it this way. I, I, I want to make sure that we see why these solutions are, they, what they are in the most kind of concrete manner. It accepts these. Those are fine. Okay. Those are more concise. Okay. Or something that's even more concise. Okay, how do these? How does pi over four and three pi over four? How do they differ? Pi over two, right? How do these differ? Pi over two. How do these two differ? Pi over two. Okay. Do you guys remember? You know, if I have something that's like a, a list that's like two, four, six, eight. Can you guys remember what kind of list that's called? Or sequence is what we refer to them as? So it's an A. Arithmetic. Okay. And arithmetic sequences are sequences that have what we call a common difference. The difference here is two, right? So every arithmetic sequence, if there is a common difference, it can be found by taking A sub N is equal to the first term plus then n minus 1 times d, where n is the position that the object is in the list. So right now, if I want to find you know, a sub n, my first term that we came up with was pi over 4. If I add to it n minus 1 times d, d being the common difference, I'm going to write the common difference as just 2 pi over 4 right now. It'll go pi over 4 plus 2 pi over 4 n minus then 2 pi over 4. I get pi over 4. It would actually be pi over 4 minus 2 pi over 4, so it gives me a negative pi over 4, right? Plus then pi over 2 n. I'm going to interchange the n with k because that's the thing that allows us to move along. If k is... 0 gives me negative pi over 4. If k is 1, does it give me positive pi over 4? Does that make sense? If k is 2, it's going to give me this one here. If k is 3, it's going to give me that one. Is that okay with everybody? Now, a lot of people don't like to start with the negative pi over 4, which is fine. You can, because of how this thing is periodic, you can start with pi over 4 and add pi over 2k. Either one of those will work, okay? So we can either write our, our infinite solutions as four separate, essentially, functions that will generate then four new solutions as we oscillate to a new k value. Or we can write it as two functions. 
So as we oscillate to k, it finds the next two, and then it finds the next two. Or we can write it as one function, and then it goes to each one of them as we as we progress through k. Does that make sense? Either either one of those scenarios is fine. Um, and people always people always ask, you know, why why do they do that? Or um, my my argument is, or does it matter? My argument is, if I'm a if I'm a 11th grade, 12th grade math student, this, this is probably appropriate, okay? If I'm a college student, okay, my hopes are that we could probably get to this. If I'm writing a paper that involves um, like a scholarly article that somebody else is going to read that has a math background, I'm probably going to write this one here. Does that kind of make sense? Um, and just based, you know, who who's the audience of my work, okay? And what's my work, and what's the what's the purpose of it, okay? Is it my understanding, or is it trying to um, convey a message to somebody else? And those are all things that you got to think about. But this, like, like I said, for all our purposes, these are fine, okay? I do think it is important mathematically to be able to see how we can go from one list of four to a list of two to a list of one. Um, but that's. That's why I. That's why sometimes, and, and you guys recognize this when I was doing math Excel with you guys in geometry. I took off like helped me solve this. Uh, I wish I could take off some of those videos in WebAssign because it doesn't lead you astray. It gives you legit information, but it might be organized or structured a little bit differently than how we talked about it in class. Which there's nothing wrong with that, uh, and it might be good for some of us to see things differently than what we did in class. But I think this is a situation where the vagueness can be confusing. All right, so just want to make sure that we talk about that. Last class had some other questions, so we spent most time doing that. What do you guys got questions about? We can do anything. Yeah, we can do 24. And I, I got your email, and I'm, I'm actually I'm going to get 24 out of here. Um, so if you're a person that struggled with this. Uh, don't worry too much about it, uh, but this will be a question that you potentially see on the final. Um, so a pilot is flying over a straight highway. Okay, so our highway is here down the bottom. Um, he determines the angle of depression to two mile posts, four miles apart. Uh, angle X to be 29 degrees and angle Y to be 51 degrees. So let's draw that in. 29. Fifty-one. Uh, it says find the distance of the plane from point A. So we will find the distance from point A to the plane. So I'm going to call that distance lowercase b. And then it wants to find the elevation of the plane as well. So we'd be trying to find that distance there. I'll call it h. Okay. Uh, first thing I would do is I would transfer some values here because we have parallel lines. This blue dotted line here, which is our horizontal, is parallel to our ground, which we call our horizon. Um, so if that's point A, that's point B. A to the plane is a transversal. So that angle right there has to be how big? 29. And then this angle right here at B would have to be 51. Okay. Uh, if I want to find B here, that I'm going to call that B. I'll call this A. We know that the two mile posts at A and B are four units apart. What is it? So this is 100 degrees. Okay. So if I want to find B, because this is a non right triangle, correct? So I have to use law of sines or law of cosines. If I have B in the angle opposite it, I have 4 in the angle opposite it. What, what structure? Does anybody remember what structure that is? That's the law of sines. I'll say sine of 100 over 4 is equal to sine of 51 over B. So then eventually that's going to lead to B equaling 4 sine of 51 over sine of 100. 
We'll type that in. So when we type that in, we get the with 3.156. So they want it rounded to two decimal places, so 3.16. Um, the next one says find the elevation of the plane. So they want to find the elevation of the plane. We try to erase here. We don't find that distance there, correct? Okay. Now, in doing this, do we know just theoretically, would I know how that splits that 100 up top? Uh, okay, so the only way that I know how it splits is because I know these, these are 29 and 51, right? So that's 29, that's 90, so that's what, 119? So then it's got to be, what, 61? So this is 61, and this here would be, what, 39? Is that okay there, buddy? Now, in order to do this, in order to find, so they want to know H here. I need to know either that distance there, which I'm not certain about, how close to A that this horizontal or sorry this vertical line comes down to, right? Does that make sense? I don't know how to split that four up. And it's not equal because those are not equal, right? Um I would argue it's probably um you know because this is this is um what two thirds of that number. Um so there's maybe that ratio shows up a little bit. I don't know. Uh, but I know it's not exactly I don't know that I don't know that blue distance. It's not two. Okay, um, I don't know this distance for the same reason. I'm looking for H, so I don't know that distance. I don't know A, but did we just find this to be 3.16? Okay, so now can I use SOHCAHTOA to find H? Can I say the sine of 29 degrees is equal to H over 3.16? So then when I take that on to Desmos, the way I'll do this, I'll call this value, just so we don't have any rounding error, I'll call that value A. So now when I say A times sine of 29, there's my 1.53 that they're asking for right there. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, the first... Um, the first portion of your final will ask a lot of SOHCAHTOA, sine, uh, law, sorry, law of sine, law of cosine questions, about three or four of them uh, from memory. Anything else on this, uh, this assignment that we want to talk about? Everybody do okay with question 23? That's not the answer. That is the answer, but it doesn't accept it. Uh, we were trying to mess around last uh, period to see what version of an answer they will accept. And they want you to they want you to simplify pretty far in that one. Anybody want to do 23? Want to do it? Okay. Um, let's see here. We have tangent of two Mine said cosine inverse of x. Okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, ultimately, if you understand the procedure, I think that's red in the problem. So your neighbor might have like sine or secant or cosecant or whatever. We we approach it really the same way. Okay. Um, it does to you know the the function that it provides me. Uh, or gives me does indicate what quadrants we're working in, so that might change per whether it says cosine or sine inverse, but 
uh, structurally the problems are going to be the same. First thing we have to realize is that cosine inverse is a nested function right now. It's on the inside of this tangent. So we have to work there first. We have to work with the two cosine inverse of x first. Uh, and that is actually um, an abstract way of providing you something else. Okay, think about this. If I were to write you an equation that said like x squared plus, I just can't see that. I don't know what's going on with my tools. x squared plus like 3x plus sine squared x plus cosine squared x. That's an abstract way of giving you what? When I write it as sine squared x plus cosine squared x. One. That's, a, that's an abstract way of giving you the value one. This, as well, is an abstract way of giving you something else. Okay? The something else that that gives you, you just got to think about this. x over one is a ratio of an adjacent side divided by a hypotenuse, right? Okay? So cosine inverse of x is a... Um, complex way or a, an abstract way of giving of giving you essentially an angle that is attached to these two sides of a right triangle. Okay? So what we want to do is we want to draw that triangle because it's going to help us get some information here. Cosine inverse only produces angles that are between what two numbers? And it's based off of the inverse. If we're to graph the inverse function, the inputs can only be between negative 1 and positive 1. The outputs are between what two degrees? 0 and 180. So that tells me I'm going to operate in either the first or second quadrant here. Okay? To decide which of those two quadrants then that we operate in, to narrow it down further, we look at what this ratio is. It's x over 1. It's positive x over positive 1, right? So if I'm only going to be allowed to work in the first or second quadrant, which of those quadrants has positive x's? Positive adjacent sides. Be the first quadrant, right? Okay. So when it says cosine inverse of x, they're telling me this picture where that is x, that is 1, and the abstract or kind of uh, complex information they're giving me here with this yellow stuff is they're giving me that information about that angle theta. So cosine inverse of x tells me the output is an angle. So what I get here is tangent of 2 theta. Okay, and... I can replace that because I have now the diagram or the picture that gives me all the information that it carries with this particular theta now. Does that make sense? Now, that's a tangent double angle, right? Tangent double angle, okay, is two tangent thetas over one minus tangent squared theta. And that might be something that you have to sift through your notes or do maybe a quick Google search of, you know, what is the double angle for tangent if you, if you don't remember it. Okay. Now that I have that, now everything, and this, was, this is why we did this, that was a problem. Because our information over here was for one theta, right? So we have to take this and rewrite it so that's in terms of one theta. And this is the formula that does that. Now I can use this picture to evaluate this. So what is tangent of theta? Well, tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent of that theta, right? So we've got to find that distance right there. Square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay. That's just using the Pythagorean theorem. So we have two of those radical 1 minus x squared over x. This this right here is tangent theta. Does that make sense? And we have two of them. Then we're going to go 1 minus 
tangent theta, which is this thing again, square root of 1 minus x squared all over x, and then we'll square it. Okay. Now, and this is what we're trying in uh, the last class, is if I go to website and type that in, it's going to tell me uh, that my answer cannot be read. Okay. Um, not sure why it can't read. I just, I just don't think that the formatting that they have and to match um, is as complex as we've got written here. So we've got to do a little bit of work here. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave the numerator alone. I am going to write that. I'm going to take that two and multiply it up here, which is fine. Now down here, I'm going to just, if I square this thing, do you guys agree that I can square the top and they cancel? And when I square the bottom, it becomes x squared? So then if I want to merge, so now I've got two fractions. So maybe I just, just to eliminate confusion, now that I've squared things, I get that, right? If I want to merge those, what do I need? Common denominator. Would you agree that the common denominator is x squared? So we have that, right? So now I would have x squared minus 1 plus x squared all over x squared, right? So it's going to be 2 root 1 minus x squared over x. I will multiply that by the reciprocal of that thing, which is x squared over 2x squared minus 1, isn't it? Because that x squared and that x squared will add together. What's going to happen with this x and this x squared? Cancel. So those go away. Now I have 2 times root 1 minus x squared times x, so it gives me 2x. So I'll write my answer here in black. We have 2x root 1 minus x squared all over 2x squared minus 1. That is our final result. Uh, yeah, probably. So, um, so you're saying that if we have tangent of 2 theta, rewrite that as sine of 2 theta over cosine of 2 theta, right? Um, I, I Maybe. So if we go, so sine of 2 theta is 2 sine x cosine x, right? And then cosine 2 theta, yeah, I think it does, because I'm going to write it as this one. Does that make sense? Uh, so now if I, if I go up to this, okay, what is the sine of x? It'd be that one, right? So I have 2 times root 1 minus x squared times then cosine of x, which is just that one, right? So there's my numerator, 2x times root 1 minus x squared. And my denominator cosine of x is x. So if we square that, we get x squared, right? So 2x squared minus 1. Absolutely. Uh, and I don't know that, you know, because there's a lot of different ways, but it, it's still going to work out. I use that formula for the cosine double angle. Remember, there's three formulas for cosine double angle, right? Um, and whichever you choose, you're going to get 2x squared minus 1. You might get negative 1 plus 2x squared. Uh, but obviously, community probably that's the same. So that's that that is, and I like see like I like you guys doing that. I like seeing you guys do that because what did that allow us to do? Yeah, circumvented a lot of algebra that we could have potentially made issues with, right, or had issues with. Um, and that's that is mathematics in a nutshell, right there. That's why we do. That's why we learn all these properties and rules and procedures and relationships, is because we want to do mathematics quickly. We want all our properties that we go through, all our relationships that we go through. We learn them because they take place of something else. They take place of other work that we want to work around or get around. Okay. Um, Good observation there. I like that. Anything else you guys want to talk about? Any other questions on there?
Nothing? 15, 15 and 21? Uh, let's see here. Two sine of theta plus one. So what we want to do here is so we want all the solutions. So we'll subtract one from both sides, and we get two sine theta equals negative one. Divide both sides by two. So we get sine theta equals negative one half. So now we have to ask, okay, what y value, or sorry, not what, what y value, what angle value, what angle measurement will give me a y value that is negative one-half? So y is negative one-half in those two quadrants, right? So if 30, 30 has a y value of one-half, so this must be 30 as well, but it's down into the third quadrant. So doesn't that make sense that that's 210 degrees? Or if we want to do it in radians, that would be, what, 7 pi over 6? This here, then going in that direction, you need to think about it as being negative 30 degrees. If you're going all the way around, it's 330 degrees. Or if we do it in radians, it would be 11 pi over 6. So the two solutions that they want for theta on one revolution would be 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. Or if we did it in degrees, it'd be 210 and 330. But then they want the infinite solutions, right? So what do I add to this? 2 pi k. What do I add over here? 360k. And I think, I think when I looked at it, they wanted it in radians. So we'll be looking at those two. Again, I, I mean, if you look at the feedback that they give, they, they write it backwards. I don't, I don't know why, um, but community property edition, so we're good. 21, Keaton? Find sine, cosine, tangent, if cosecant. Okay, let me write a list. So cosecant of x equaled 6. I think it said tangent of x was less than 0. And it wants sine of 2x cosine 2x tangent of 2x. All right, so what we're looking for here is it says cosecant is Six. Now, I don't like dealing with cosecant. What's, what's cosecant's re reciprocal? Sine. So it's saying sine of x is one six. Gives me two values right there, right? Gives me the opposite side and gives me the hypotenuse, okay? Tangent of x is less than zero. So it's saying tangent is negative, right? What quadrant is tangent negative in? second and fourth, okay? But because the sign is positive, it's telling me i got to be in this quadrant here, right? Okay. So the X that we're looking for, obviously, is that one there, okay? Um, or I guess that's the X that is providing this 1, 6. So the Y is 1, this is 6. Uh, if we use Pythagorean theorem, does this have to be radical 35? All right. Okay. So now that's for x. If they want sine of 2x, that changes to that. And now that's the issue with being able to ask that right away is that we don't know what we don't know what x was, so we don't know what double that is, right? Okay. But we know the image, we know that sine of x is 1, 6. So we can generate this, and then 
use a identity that breaks a 2x down to 1x's. So now I got 2 sine of x was 1 6th. Cosine of x, oh, that should be negative, right? Cosine of x is negative radical 35 over 6. So you get negative 2 radical 35 over 36. So negative radical 35 over 18 should be sine of 2x. But okay? So then cosine of 2x, okay? I just, I, for whatever reason, that formula for cosine 2x sticks in my mind better than the other ones do. Um, I think the other one is 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Uh, and maybe that one's better to use because the sine squared, so 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Let's use that one instead because I already have sine of x, right? So I go 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. So that's going to be 136, right? So I get 36 over 36 minus 2 over 36 gives me 34 over 36, 17 eighteenths, right? Now we can use the tangent double angle or use Anthony's approach, which I think is best here. Tangent is sine of 2x over cosine 2x, right? Why would I use that? There you go, negative radical 35 over 18, then divided by 17 over 18. What's going to happen with those? 18s cancel. So if 18s cancel, we're left with negative root 35 over 17 as the tangent. We can, and we don't have time right now, but we can come back and check the, hey, we got time. Uh, let's check it real quick. Let's go, uh, If I've got my calculator, okay, we know that they, they told us cosecant of x gives us 6, okay? So we figured out that sine of I, I think that this calculator has the arc cosecant programmed into it, so it does. So I can say 6, okay? Um, we're in degrees right now, so what that's doing is giving me... Um, 9.59 degrees. Now, that is in the first quadrant right now, and we knew because tangent was negative that we actually had to be in the second quadrant, right? Okay. So, in order to get into the second quadrant, I'm actually going to take 180 minus that. So, that's what our x value is. Does that make sense? That is x right now. Um, so, I'm going to, if I can't use x here in this um, application, so I'll just call it K. Okay, well, if I double that, okay, I want to see what that looks like. So, 2K would be that angle. Does that make sense? Okay, and that's what they're asking us about. What is the sign of that angle? What is the sign of 2K? It's that number right there. Is that the same thing as negative square root of 35 divided by 18. Exact same numbers, right? Okay. They want to know what is the cosine of this angle of 340. 0.94444 repeating, right? Is that 18 over 17? No. And that's not what the number was. Anyway. 17 over 18. Seventeen over eighteen. Okay, and we want the tangent. The tangent was negative root thirty-five over seventeen. We see it; those two then are the exact same thing, right? I like those questions. Okay, I think those questions force you to have a good understanding of your your inverse functions, the good understanding of your um, sine, cosine, tangent functions. Um, obviously, they incorporate your identities. There's a, there's a lot of dynamics going on there that pull from different aspects of chapter six and seven that I think are um, 
that make those really good questions. And, and if you can be successful within those, I think you, you, you've you done your due diligence in learning the, the information. No new homework this evening. Uh, tomorrow we're going to start Chapter 8. Okay. Um, if you end up having questions over Chapter 7 still, um, please don't hesitate to ask us. I will. Um, uh, last week as well, um, there will be a Chapter 7 test, but I'm going to just kind of keep the same format.